Hi everybody, Pastor Cliff Mansley here in sunny Surprise, Arizona, Grace Community Church. So glad you could tune in to our next exciting episode of the Gospel of John. We're deep into the, the Gospel. We're at chapter 8, starting in verse 31. And today we're going to go through 47. We really could go all the way to 59, but uh, that would be too much of a chunk for us to do in one session. So here we are at chapter 8, 31 through 47. We're going to go ahead and read this all the way through, and then we're going to go through verse by verse. But this is probably, um, wow, this is probably the most vitriol that we see in the debates or in the clashes between Jesus and the Jews. And uh, interestingly, uh, these were Jews who had believed in Jesus, but now, ironically, they're turning on him. And so uh, things get really heated. Let's go ahead and start reading, but first we're going to just pray over this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is like a two-edged sword that cuts us to the heart. Lord, teach us your ways. Apply them to our head and our heart that our lives would be uh, bright and shining with your love and your light in this world, this dark world that needs so much help. Thank you, Lord, for this gospel. And thank you, Lord, that you made this gospel real uh, because you lived this out and uh, and you gave us hope. So thank you for this good news. And we just love you and dedicate this time to your glory in Jesus name. Amen. All right, here we go. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you know the truth and the truth will what? set you free. They answered him, ah, we're the offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Ouch. The slave does not remain in his house forever. The son remains forever. For so if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I have seen for, with my father, and you do, do what you have heard from your father. Ooh. They answered him, Abraham's our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works of your father, the works your father did, they said to him. We were not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and I'm here. I am here. <laughs> I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and you will, your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in, tr in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. And because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Woo! There's a lot going on here. A lot of back and forth. So let's dig right in, friends. And... Um, uh, I hope that you're really concentrating because there, there is much going on here. Uh, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him. So in other words, these were people who had believed, but now they're turning. Um, uh, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, wow, we've heard that before. But that first part is, if you abide in my word... Okay, what does it mean to abide? It means to continue in faith. It means to live in faith. 
I know so many people who uh, uh, claim to be believers, but then they go off and they live like hell. It's terrible. Uh, they say one thing and do another thing. Well, pastor, you're judging. No, I'm knowing a tree by its fruits. Same chapter, chapter 7 of Matthew. Check it out. But uh, what we have here is uh, Jesus is saying, you need to believe the things that I have told you. And as you do that, it will change you. It'll transform you. It will set you free. How is that? See, because you will know the truth. The words of Jesus are truth. How do we know that? Jesus, Jesus is the truth. What did he say? What, what, what did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life. The truth is a person. It's not some philosophical construct. The truth is the person of Jesus Christ. And we need to get to, we need to understand that. God is truth. Okay, we say God is love. Yes, that's true. God is kind. God is good. God is truth. Jesus embodies truth. And the truth, and only he, the truth, Jesus, can set us free. And um, so for those who truly follow Jesus, they're going to follow his word. I know lots and lots of people who call themselves Christians, and they will twist the word of God. I mean, look at all the aberrant behaviors we have going on in churches across the country. We have churches that fly flags promoting things that go contrary to the scriptures. Do you think God's going to bless that? Heavens, no! So those are people who once said they believed, but they've rejected, really, the truth of the gospel. They answered him, We're the offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. Oh, this is interesting. Now, you have to understand that in this passage, and we could, like I said, actually go all the way from chapter, or from verse 31 all the way to verse 59, but we're just going to go to 47. Um, but there is a thread here, and Abraham is, a, is the common thread of all these verses. Abraham's mentioned in verse 39, verse I'm sorry, verse 37, verse 39, verse 40, verse 4, 53, verse 56, verse, verse, verse 57, and verse 58. Uh, so there's this thread of Abraham being in here. And they, they believe, the Jews believe, that they are Abraham's offspring. Father Abraham has seven sons. Okay, anyway, so um, they, they, they always placed a premium on uh, being free because they're God's people, but they're claiming that they, they've not been enslaved to anyone because they're Hebrew because of their bloodline. But the truth of the matter is they were enslaved. They were enslaved by Egypt, by Assyria, by Babylon, by Persia, by Greece, by Rome. And so it's a pretty touchy subject, this whole question of freedom. And, um, they say, we've never been enslaved by anyone. Hogwash. Uh, how is it that you say uh, you will become free? Now, Jesus is, he answered them, truly, truly, this is verse 34, truly, truly. Remember, that's a, uh, whenever Jesus says something twice, it's, it's really underscoring it. Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Do you understand that? Every time we sin, we're going back to the chains. That's, that's exactly what we're doing. We're going back to the whip. We're going back to the scourge. We're going back. Is a, is a slave free? No, a slave isn't free. A slave it has no freedoms. A, a slave is at the behest of someone else, whoever is, the slave's owner is. In this case, Jesus is saying, your owner is sin. Every time you commit a sin, you're a slave to that. So, if we are to be set free, and when we are set free in Christ... We're free. We do not have to sin. We do not have to um, uh, knowingly, willingly participate in sin. We're free from that. Um, so uh, Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. Remember this, when we say practice sin, that's different than committing a sin in the sense that we are intentionally, ongoingly participating in sin. I'm not, now just keep in mind, all sin separates us from the Father. All sin sep separates us from God. Uh, I'm not trying to belittle uh, or, or be diminutive in speaking about sin 
of any kind, all sin. If I steal a stick of bubble gum, that's still a sin and it leads to death. Um, uh, if I murder somebody, that sin, it leads to death. It leads to judgment. It leads to uh, condemnation. Uh, it separates us from God. Now, there are different sins that have uh, that. Uh, the gravity of those sins may be of different levels, but still, uh, just one sin separates us from God, even a stick of bubble gum. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, none of us just commit one sin. Uh, I, I forget who said it, but um, I, I, I um, Bach is the last name of the philosopher who said this. It's, it's, it's a. Uh, it's hard to commit just one sin. Um, you, it's it's harder uh, to not repeat sins. Um, anyway, we we're addicted to sin, friends. We practice sin. Uh, however, the problem is when we become very intentional about it. When we become very intentional and we repeat, we repeat, we repeat. Um, Oh, truly, truly, I say to you, anyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. Okay. The son remains forever. Okay. The slave can be sold off or they, they could be put out and have to live somewhere else uh, on, on the property. Uh, they don't ha have all the same privileges of one remaining in the house, but the son remains forever. So if the son sets you free you will be free indeed. So it's Jesus who sets us free. How does he do that? Through his blood shed on the cross, through his gracious mercy and kindness that he shows to us. He didn't have to do that, but he takes his righteousness and imputes it on us. He, 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 uh, his righteousness becomes our righteousness. Our sin becomes his sin. And so our sin is imputed to him while he's on the cross. He ta pays the price for our, uh, our sin. And so um, that is how the Son sets us free. And that's why we say at the end of the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus is glorified on the cross. He's come and he's victorious. What? Because he became sin? Uh, yeah, because he became sin and he became that sacrifice for us. He was our substitute on the cross. And um, now there's a whole lot more than that to that. And I just wanted to, to highlight that a little bit. Um, we're going to come back to that in uh, a number of chapters. So, uh, I know that you are offspring of Abraham. In other words, I know that you're of the bloodline of Abraham. Yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in in you that's interesting they they were rejecting god's word the very words of god they were rejecting but they're still claiming the bloodline of abraham and jesus is basically saying uh-uh no you're not his spiritual children you're just physical children you're just you're just um flesh and blood but to truly be abraham's children you have to be of the same heart. Anyway, um, uh, I know that you're offspring of, of Abraham, but you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. So the, the, what is it? What do the Ten Commandments say? Thou shalt not what? Kill. They're plotting to murder him. I speak of what I have seen with my father and you do what you have heard from your father. Wow. Jesus is saying he's seen the Father. He's one with the Father in essence because he is the, the, the firstborn son. He is uh, the only begotten son uh, as, as it, we're told in the first chapter of John. And you do what you have heard from your father. Hmm, interesting. We're going to find out more of who that father is. So, um... They answered him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me. Uh, isn't that the sin of Cain? Uh, a man who has told you the truth, 
that I heard from God. So again, he's not only claiming to have seen God, he's claiming to have heard from God as his son. This is not what Abraham did. You are doing the works your father did. There he, he repeats that again. They said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality. In other words, we're not bastards. We're not, uh, we're not born of um, a prom promiscuous uh, lifestyle of, of our parents. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. Woo! Big claim, people. There it is. For I came from God, and I am, ego a me, I am here. I am here. Remember the burning bush? Remember that. Um, if God were your father, you would love me. Because I came from God, and I am here. He is claiming that he is one with the Father. That's that word hypostasis, where the the, 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 the Father is one with the Son. Um, two separate people, two separate uh, persons, and yet uh, they are one. Um, so, um, let's read on. I came not of my own accord. But he sent me. In other words, he's on a mission from the Father. And he represents the Father. Remember the laws of primogeniture. It's a great word, isn't it? It just really means that the firstborn son represents the Father and often would represent the Father in business transactions. He would wear a signet ring and uh, he would use that as the seal of the Father. And his word was as good as his Father's word. So th this is really what we're we're talking about here. Um, why do you not understand what I say? Is it because you cannot bear to hear my word? Hmm. Actually, that's not a question, is it? It is because that's a. <laughs> I got to read this right. You know, I I have a a little bit of an issue with words floating around on a page. It's a it's an odd thing uh, in terms of my eyesight. So, it is because you cannot bear to hear my word. Have you ever noticed that there are people who just they they shut you down. You 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 want to talk about something that uh, maybe a little controversial. They'll shut you down. They'll cancel you out. Well, these people were canceling out Jesus. They said, we're not even going to talk about this. We, we're, we're done with you. We want to kill you. And that's what we see in our culture today. We see uh, lots of people in, in government, in the media, and in the institutions of our land. If uh, you promote anything of, of the gospel in opposition to what the larger narrative is, my goodness, you'd think we were in Soviet Russia. You would think that the Bolsheviks were after us. Um <laughs> In a way, this is what they're doing here. Uh, they're being Bolsheviks towards Jesus. Um, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. So it's not the persuasiveness of Jesus that's uh, critical here. It is the hardness of their hearts that makes it virtually impossible for them to hear what Jesus is saying. They can't bear to hear his word. Um, you are of your father, the devil. Ooh, here we are at the climax of this sec section. You are uh, of your father, the devil. And your will is to do your father's desires. Wow. The devil, the father of lies. The... Uh, the one who masquerades as an angel of light, um, the one of whom God spoke of to Cain back in, um, you know, as they were, uh, as he was bringing his sacrifice to the Lord, he said, hey, be careful, Cain. Sin is crouching at your door. You know, the evil one is crouching at your door, waiting to see who he can devour. He wants to pounce on you. And, um, and uh, so, 
Who did uh, Cain trust? He trusted the one who was crouching at his door. He didn't trust the Lord. He trusted the devil. What did Adam and Eve do uh, back in the garden? Uh, instead of trusting God's word, they trusted in the evil one's word. And so this is one of the problems of being a human being from the very beginning. Our, our tendency is to always choose the wrong way. It doesn't happen always. I mean, we do good things, but left to our own devices uh, without Christ, apart from God, we're going to choose that which is wrong. And we're going to choose that which goes against the Lord. And, um, and your will is to do your father's desires. What does the devil desire? He desires for us to be divided, hateful, mean, cruel, vicious, false, empty, uh, I could just go on uh, a long uh, diatribe uh, about this. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. There it is. Satan is not the truth. You know what's interesting to me is that we have schools now, uh, Portland, Oregon, for example, where they are having after school clubs, Satan after school clubs. Check it out. Your pastor hasn't gone nuts. Uh, I, I'm serious. They've, they, they've been doing this around the country. Satanism is becoming, is on the rise. That which comes in absolute conflict with the gospel. That which is totally the opposite. That which masquerades as an angel of light has come against the gospel. And let me tell you, friends, it's time for us to seek the Lord with all our hearts. And uh, we need to abide in the truth because that is the only way that we're going to come against uh, the lies of the world, the flesh, and the devil. It's the only way we're going to do it. And friends, we are living in very, very dangerous times. I say that now, and who knows, I may be shut down later. But listen carefully. All right. Verse 45, but because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. It sounds like the cancel culture again. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Hmm. Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Friends, I don't know how to unpack all that. I just know that when the Holy Spirit begins to speak to us, we better be listening. We better be listening to God's Word. We better be studying God's Word because this is where we find life and that abundantly. And apart from Jesus, as he says in John 15, we're going to study that eventually, um, we can do nothing apart from him we can do nothing. So, friends, I want to encourage you to abide in God's, in, to, to abide in Christ, to trust Christ, to listen to Christ, to let his word speak to your heart. Let it sink deeply in you. What's the emergency verse? Aha, that's Psalm 11911. I've treasured your word in my heart, Lord, that I may not sin against you. Well, when we don't have sin between us and the Lord, we we have harmony, we have life, we have truth, we have beauty, we have all, we have freedom. <laughs> if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. So we want to abide in truth. We, we want to abide in the one who is truth. We want to walk in his ways. We want to love like Jesus does. And believe me, friends, our lives will be transformed and we will be empowered to live lives that this world cannot produce. No matter how hard we try to become some sort of a Soviet-type system, no matter how hard we try to do the globalism thing, or we try to do the, uh, all religions are the same. No, they're not. That shows you're ignorant if you, if you believe that. Friends, uh, you, you study world religions. I have. I, I've been... To, I've studied in India, I've studied at Harvard Divinity School, studied in different places, and I've studied these different world religions. There's, there's really no comparison between 
Christianity and all the other religions of the world. Why? Because the truth of the gospel is that the grace of God is that which sets us free. We're saved, what? By grace through faith uh, so that no one can boast. It's not of our own works. All other religions say that it's basically based on your works that you're set free. No way, friends. No way. There's no way I can do that on my own. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Keep that in your heart and mind. Sure do love you. And uh, send me a, a, a text or an email. Uh, let me know how you're doing. If you've got questions or concerns, uh, I'm just your garden variety pastor uh, trying, to, trying to understand God's word with you. Um, but let's keep our eyes fixed on Jesus uh, no matter what. And keep looking up until we meet again. Lord Jesus, bless your bless my friends who are tuning in today. Uh, strengthen them in their understanding of your word. Uh, because phew, apart from you, we don't have much understanding. Help us, Lord, to abide in your truth. Uh, that we might honor and bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. <music>